Hello and welcome back. My name is Ahmed Al Jawad. I'm the CCNA instructor for TechPix.net. Today we are finishing our uh, free CCNA uh, series. Uh, last time we were. Let me go to Tech. Tech. Uh, I can't spell it. TechPix.net. Let's see where we were last time. Uh, sorry for being uh, late of updating and doing the new. Uh, video because I was a little bit busy of my CCMP data center anyway we get to the OSI model and we talked how's the OSI model uh, trying to get a picture for the OSI model so we a little bit right here so we talked how's the OSI model is a conceptual model that's actually used for ease of troubleshooting and isolate the problem and developing the uh, network platforms and hoses seven layers starting from physical data link network transport session presentation application and i think i said that as as it for cisco we actually interested to troubleshoot from the transport layer down to the other application presentation and session layers kind of more of an operating system uh, application or layers that the operating system is using Today we are going to talk how the communication is actually starting and what we need to the communication platform to happen. There's two main things to keep in your mind that's for any communication to happen between two devices we need two kind of addresses. The first one is called IP address and the second one is called MAC address. The IP address is layer 3 and the MAC address is layer 2. So when this guy right here sending the uh, I think I clicked on him right, anyway oh, I have no idea how I could go away from it let me just go back okay so if this guy right here to the left trying to send a packet any kind of packet like whoop page or let's assume this he's he's a, a win a whoop server or any kind of server or he's just chatting with other guys so after he's sending his uh, information or data to the application their presentation then the transport layer the, the session layer, the transport layer actually is starting what is called the three-way handshake. And with the three-way handshake, I want you guys to go to YouTube and YouTube the three-way three -way handshake. That's actually the first thing. So is, is start, let me... So for any communication between two devices to happen, the first thing is start in the uh, layer four is the three-way handshake. The three-way handshake is there's a lot of on YouTube a lot of things for the three-way handshake just go and uh, look at it and it will explain what is it here's for example one of them and it's for from the train signal one of the companies that have uh, training and it's actually going to show you how is that happening they have like you know very nice explanation on what the three-way handshake with all the information with the port number and all that thing in a brief I'll talk about it and explain what is it let me give my paint here so I could explain it so three-way handshake is a way to find out if the uh, destination host a host when I see a host when I say a host that mean any uh, PC or computer on on the network so let's assume here is like you know computer one trying to communicate let's say with server or computer on the other on the other side what's actually happening this guy if he's the initiator or he's trying to uh, start the communication he, he start what is called the three-way handshake and he's sending like a packet asking you know hey are you there he goes like you know yes I'm here you know and then he's acknowledged like yes and then he goes like you know okay I'm going to send you the data it's kind of like in a brief what is it but it's there, there's a lot of better explanation on the videos you just have to go and the, know exactly you know what is it we're actually going to see it see it in in actual real real life because uh, I think I downloaded the GNS anyway I didn't I'll download the GNS uh, while we're talking so I could explain it on GNS and uh pack tracer sorry genus and uh, wireshark the wireshark is software for uh sniffing the traffic on 
the uh, wire we're going to actually to see the traffic on the wire so I'm downloading here anyway until it download let me just start downloading then I'll go back to here we go we're downloading so after the three-way handshake is finished on the transport layer now we send it to the network layer where we're looking at the IP address then after that to the data link layer now I said there's two important addresses that we need to start the communications the IP and the MAC address and we actually need to transform uh, between the MAC address and the IP address to send the traffic uh, and by transforming I'm saying like if you have a MAC address for a destination but you don't have his IP address we have to use what we call the address resolution protocol where the address resolution protocol is asking who has that you know you know uh, MAC address so it's here says the address stomach keyboard that's used to resolution network address in the link layer address I'm trying to see exactly to convert IP address to physical so the ARP is the way to convert uh, IP to MAC we'll come back to it later now what is the IP address what is consist of the internet protocol address IP address is a numerical label assigned to each device so each device has to has an IP address for example computer or printer you know any host on the network as I said the IP address in general is consist of two we will say that like you have to go through the definition and it will tell you that this consists of two parts the host part and the network part right here is like an example of the IP address 172.16 and again I have to find a way to disable this so there's 172.16.254.1 and how does that mean I'll go through how to convert it to binary and how to know exactly how that's very important because you are going to get to what's called a subnetting we're going to talk about it a little bit after this and you need to know how to convert this right away to a binary uh, for it very important other thing very I'll, I'll cover this now but before that I wanted to know there's three kind of I of well in general there's two two kind of IP ad of IPv4 addresses the private IP address and the public IP address the private IP address is what you can use in your local network the private the public IP address is actually what's the internet service the provider is assigned to you so any internet service provider of provider has his own public IP address and when he goes to like trying to assign you a public IP he has like his own range that's already assigned to him from the I from the uh, internet exchange agencies there's a lot of agencies that's actually control the IP public IP address assignment for the private IP address we have three ranges in the back classes I'll say so class a class B let me just go to the installation of this so there's class A class B class C and class A is starting from here all the way to here class C is starting from here all the way to here and uh, no class C is starting from 192.0.0.0 all the way to 223.255.255.255.255 I said no why is it installing anyway so you have to know the private IP address uh, ranges and it might be if I remember very good like I, I, I uh, they asked me about how many addresses in one of the classes in the exams before so you have to know how many addresses available in each classes you know how many network how many hosts it says I right here you know uh, number of networks you know see right here number of hosts you know right here so you have to know all that information now how we can actually convert the private IP address to a public IP the sorry the uh, private address to the binary I'll use the Microsoft video word word yeah word work all right so let me explain that that is very important I don't know if some of you guys who studied computer science I'll assume and some other uh, college degrees they explains how to uh, represent the binary the decimal to a binary go to decimal to a binary how to convert that there is kind of a table you have to uh, remember all the time you have to memorize that table I'll show you that table and that is the table that you depends on to convert your public IP address to uh, sorry 
always I'm saying public it's not a public it's private to the uh, binary so it goes like this 128 I'll give it a little bit uh, dot no there's not that so 64 or you know what no let me just go down a little bit because I want to show exactly how is it so before the IPv4 address is 4 oct C1234. So N is actually separated by dot. I have no idea why that zoomed, but anyway, N is separated by dots right here. See? And if you count, each oct has 8 bits 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay this 8 bits right here this 8 bits right here each number of them it represent a number in that table i'm going to show you so this right here it represents represent 128 right here is 46 32 16 8 4 2 one I know it doesn't make sense now but let's write it down let's go back to that I write down the same address right here one seven two sixteen two five four dot two five four dot one okay and we said this is one two eight sixty four we said eight bit so the 8 bit is 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. And then the same dot. So this for the 16. And I'll show you what does that mean. I'm just going to have to put them together right now. So here's the 172.16. We just just going to copy and paste them next to them. Because they're all the same. When it's just to here. There we go. 16, 254. and dot one okay i'll make him a little bit bigger oh that's too much bigger right yep all right so what is this you have to gather like a sequence of the number below here until you get to the 172 so if I want to get to the 172, I have to gather 128 plus, if you go plus 64, that's over 172. And if you go plus 32, you know what, matter of fact, let me just the calculator so I can show you. So you want to get to the 172 from this table, so 128 plus if you go 64 that's actually 192 which is above 172 that's what's not what you need so you have to stick with 128 plus 32 that is still above well it is not above it's less but you have actually to gather other digits until you get to the 172 so if you get you 160 you need let me see right here for the 160 172 you need another 12 from the 160 for example and how you are going to get the 12 you can get it from oh sorry not 12 which uh you need um yep 12 i have no idea why it is not 162 that's 64 we did that. No, I, I, there's something wrong with my calculation here. Hold on. Let me just make so one, two, eight plus six, four. Yep, it's over. And then thirty-two. Ah, so we were on the thirty-two. Yep, yep. One to thirty-two is one. So you have to put one end of the thirty-two. So one to eight, and then thirty-two, and now we need a twelve after the thirty-two. 
So we calculate 128 plus 32. There is 160. How much we need? We need another 12 to get to the 172. The other 12 is 8 plus 4. Make it 12. So we go 0. 8 will give it 1. 4 give it 1. Then 0. 0. That's the that's the 172 so 128 plus 32 plus 8 plus 4 that's 172 right here now 16 is easy because we already have a digit of 16 so we have to go 0 plus 0 plus 0 1 0 0 0 0 254 is easy because it will be all ones because if you can gather all of this, this will be 255. Like if you gather 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, that will be 255. So the two, well, we have to put the dots so we could have a differentiation between them. So the 255 will be, will be 1, that 1, uh, sorry, no, not that 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1. Okay, and number one is even easier because all zeros, one in the end, so the six zeros. So this is how you represent the one seven two sixteen two five four one in the binary. How to convert them? You have to remember this all the time. This kind of you know numerical sequence of one two eight sixty four thirty two sixteen eight four two one. As I said, for people who study in computer science, they know where that is. This how you actually convert to the uh, decimal to binary, and you have to gather 172 out of this table. 128, 64 over 172, so you have to go 32, and then you missed the 12. You have to put one, and so far. So this actual how you do the conversation and the converting, and. This will be very important to the uh, other uh, videos where we are going to do a subnetting. I'm not sure if I'm going to cover the subnetting because usually there is uh, a lot of other uh, videos. They cover the subnetting better than me on the YouTube or uh, on the websites. Okay, uh, I'm not sure why I did. trying to go back to the normal here we go oh because i drove that picture and i clicked on it that way we went to the zoom anyway now we did install oh why this is not installing anymore i have to see it okay we have to get next finish and now it's going all right so after we got the ip address and how you calculate the ip address the mac address actually is coming burned in the interface from the manufacturing company so if the manufacturer company of your computers for example hp hp has their own mac address range it's already burned in their uh internet or uh the ethernet interface you don't have to know exactly you know how to do the subnet for it but you have to know all the information about the mac address media access control address is a unique identifier assigned to the network interface for the communication on physical network segments Mm, blah 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 and how much how many bits is consist of and there's two way of uh, you can find the uh, mac address is count you can find them well a lot of way not just two ways so you could maybe go to find them like this you know for three ox of four digits or four signs because it's uh hexadecimal so you actually can find the a b c uh d uh, in them in the address and here is explain the address details what is this for and exactly what is that you know here you can see that the organizational uh, unique identifier and where's the and the network interface controller that's how it consists of the mac address now for any uh, two computers communicate they need the mac address and then if they have the ip address they have to resolve it to mac address and that's where the address resolution protocol the arp is coming into place and the arp is just you know like the switch or the computer is doing arp2 is actually 
screaming and saying hey i have this ip address who's who's this for it's like you know it's like you, you, one day you know you, you find for example a phone number but you don't know who's this phone number for you have to you know call and he goes like you know hey i have this ip this phone number who's this for it's exactly kind of the same is here going to explain uh how's the uh, what what is the arp and it's actually link layer which layer two arp and inverse arp there's another one is inverse inverse arp is we just not going to talk about it now actually for uh, this is very important uh, the internet protocol suite is very important you have to remember most of these uh protocols and where they reside in the osi model like in the link layer you have the rppp media ospf mm, not sure anyway they were saying icmp igmp all that is protocols so mm, now i'm trying to I'll, I'll i'll finish downloading the gns and i'll come back to you just because uh i want to show you how, how is actually the ip address look like in uh, uh and the mac address on the real time so i'm trying to uh download the dns and actually show you with the wireshark how does that look like i'll be back